So what is the question? So I would like you to explain what you know about dyslexia in Hungary, how you met it, or uh, what are your experiences about it, mm -hmm. and uh, were you taught at university mm -hmm. about this topic? Okay, so I graduated uh, from my MA in 2001, and first I didn't uh, pursue my teacher's qualifications, Therefore, I didn't attend any methodology classes back then, so I wasn't aware of special needs students or learning disabilities, dyslexia, dyscalculia, or any of that. The first time I came across this phenomenon was when I taught in Israel in 2002, uh, where I had a small group of special needs students. Then, when I moved back to Hungary, I went back to school to finish my teacher's qualifications in 2004 and 5, and that was when, through my methodology studies, I did encounter some of the issues, but we didn't really go into details. It was more that I had first-hand experience of what the students were like and how they could learn. So, being a, a student-centered teacher, I try to find ways to teach them accordingly, according to their abilities and their um, progress. And then uh, I learned more about dyslexic students when I started working in a foundation school which had uh, ADHD, learning disability and dyslexic students almost singularly um, among their, its walls. Um, so again, I had first-hand experience how to teach them, and parallelly, I started my PhD uh, studies, and that's where uh, one of my um, classmates was also a special needs teacher, Esther Bakos, and she was focusing her PhD studies on dyslexic students. And there was another uh, girl called Agnes Sharkadi, who was the full-time PhD student at the department, and she was uh, involved with the other teachers, Judith Kormos and uh, Kata Cizer and Edith Contra in uh, the university departments, applied linguistic department uh, research on dyslexic students. They did publish some papers on, um, on these issues. As far as I remember, when we were talking about this, it was clear that regular English as a foreign language teachers had no idea what dyslexia was. Uh, usually it was, uh, these students were labeled as lazy, um, uh, uninterested, uh, weak, and n n they weren't given any help. No personal interest coming from the teacher uh, was shown towards them. It is true that when I was at this special foundation school with the special kids, uh, it was true, you could see that they, because they had this very high IQ, uh, they did manage to compensate their learning disabilities. And, and I would say that at least one third of them, but maybe even more, half of them did take advantage of the fact that they could say, hey, I'm a special needs student, I cannot do this or that. And then they just tried try to get away with not putting any effort into learning, which, uh, which was really nice for me as a teacher to experience that, that it's not true that they cannot learn, even English. Sometimes they would have problems in Hungarian, uh, spelling mistakes, uh, grammar mistakes, not understanding things, but they would still be able to communicate in English, maybe not perfectly, but you know, who cares if you don't understand present perfect if you get your meaning along. So it wasn't that a big problem. And, uh, and I also remember that uh, we read about research saying that the mother tongue uses different um, um, neurological paths than the, the, the second language or the foreign language. So if you have dyslexia in your mother tongue, that does not mean that you will have any problems learning another language. Mm -hmm. So in my experience, the biggest problem with special needs students is that they develop a sense of being different, a sense of being ill, and uh, a sense of, uh, of not being good enough. And that mm, teaches them learned helplessness. And that makes them lose their motivation. And that makes them not try to put 
as much effort into studying as they could actually have. Yes, it's true, it's very um, tiresome for them. It's more energy for them to read. It's more tiring for them to read and, and comprehend things. Uh, but that's not an excuse for them not to listen to the lecture and the lesson where they could actually learn everything while listening to it because their auditive um, skills might not be um, involved in this, um, in this disability. So there, uh, what I have learned is that you have to have a fine balance between um, a, a, between um, taking advantage or paying attention to a student being dyslexic and trying to help them and, uh, and being strict enough with them still, but giving them the option of um, testing uh, maybe orally. And what I found, uh, what works is that you provide them an atmosphere of uh, acceptance uh, that they understand that they can make a mistake and they won't get punished for it. Um, so this caring environment can, uh, can help them understand and realize that they, it's their um, interest to keep learning. They will get as much assistance from the teacher as possible and they won't get punished for being what they are or being who they are with their disabilities. And that gives them an and a psychological openness to studies mm -hmm. and that way they can manage to learn to compensate on their own. So that was my experience. Then I also participated uh, in a workshop where um, a British scientist was invited. I forgot his uh, family name. Uh, he was in and um, he was working together with one of the other um, leading experts on Hungarian dyslexic students called Eva Gyarmati. And one of the, um, uh, the, the, one of the pictures or one of the ideas that they mentioned there that has stayed with me ever since was that if you take a, 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 a special needs student or a dyslexic student um, where uh, the student would have to get from uh, point A to point B in their thoughts, they would not choose, their brain would not choose a linear um, approach or a linear way of getting there. They would start going into different things. And if you imagine it as a slide or as a picture on a TV, then the pole, ball starting from point A would start going somewhere, would even leave the screen so you don't know where the ball goes, but then suddenly it appears at point B at the end, at the solution. But it means that they are creative. Yes, exactly. So they, they go somewhere, you don't know where their brain processes take them, and they usually get to point B faster than a regular, mm. normal person would go from point A to point B in a linear fashion. And we just don't know how they work. So their brain is a complete black box. But if you, if you know this, that makes you as a teacher open, and you might not understand what they are doing or how they are doing it. They might be standing on their heads while they are uh, telling you a story. But if it works for them, why shouldn't you let them do it that way, mm -hmm. right? If you want to uh, uh, assess them and, um, and give them marks. And, um, and I also remember reading it in research that most of these dyslexic students uh, learn to compensate or they, they called it outgrowing it by the time they get into university. So they manage to find ways of living with it so that their uh, achievement, academic achievement, is not less by the time they go to university. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't know that Churchill was dyslexic, mo most probably, and you wouldn't know that probably Einstein was dyslexic as well, because they found a way to, to compensate for it. So the only problem is when we start to teach these students the same way as the mainstream, uh, and if we assess them the same way. As soon as you change the assessment, you can get, you can see that these students also know. It's just you have to approach them from a different perspective. Okay, and what about the present? Do you have any dyslexic students, or what do you think the teachers, do the teachers care about these learning difficulties? Um, most of my colleagues do not care about these. There's a general tendency of not having enough time, energy, or interest in dealing with these kids separately, even if they have uh, um, 
what we call papers, documenting, documentation that says that they have these problems and maybe they should even not be, sh shouldn't even be uh, assessed in the same way, in a written way, but they should be assessed orally. Still, some, t some teachers would ignore that and they would still give them written papers and mark them accordingly, uh, which I think is unfair. Uh, I try to at least show in my lessons that it's okay uh, for a dyslexic student not to have the spelling correctly. If I have uh, issues with someone who I have to test orally, I explain to the whole class that this is what the problem is, this is his or her situation. Uh, it doesn't mean that he's better or worse. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that he's, um, he's getting any special treatment. I'm just adjusting my treatment to his needs. Uh, and that's why he gets the oral part uh, in assessment. And I find it that as soon as I uh, explain this to a whole group and we have a discussion about it, the group, the, the, the group doesn't feel that there's discrimination in this way of treating the, the other students compared to them. Uh, and yes, still, generally speaking, if you start speaking with, uh, with Hungarian teachers, and they don't have to be English teachers, any other teachers, maybe even more among Hungarian literature, history, geography, other subject teachers, they, th they say they are overwhelmed with the material they have to teach to their uh, groups, and they don't have time, and, and they, don't, they can't um, spend any extra energy on, um, on these kids, so they ignore them even though literature has shown that that's not the proper way of doing things. And on top of everything else, um, last year a law, a new law was passed in Hungary which is limiting the number of students who can get documentation as special needs students and dyslexic students. So compared to the previous years, now there will be officially less documented people, not because there will be less problematic kids, but because the documentation criteria has been um, uh, restricted to certain cases. It was argued by the government that many students took advantage of these papers and they just want, wanted to get away with um, their studies in an easier uh, manner. That was the reason for it. Um, psychologists, school psychologists, educational psychologists have highlighted the fact that uh, that, 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 is, that might be the case in, cer in certain um, students, but it does, this new law does um, hurt other students' situations, especially in the countryside. You have to know that in Hungary, if someone has documentation for being a special needs student or having uh, ADHD, ADHD or um, behavioral problems, uh, they are entitled legally to have uh, special needs education which the government cannot provide them in, any, in many areas. So in order for the government not to be legally um, challenged for not doing its job, they rather changed the law so that they cannot be caught uh, not doing the proper thing legally. And then, yeah, that's the problem. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>